If you were wondering how it could be possible that Republicans could barrel forward with a policy platform that included something as unpopular as banning abortion, all you have to do is listen to these idiots' thought processes, and suddenly it becomes pretty clear how they ended up in this spot. This is Mark Simone speaking with Larry Kudlow, and first of all, dear God is this dude deluded. He starts off by saying this. It hurts Trump for a few days, and then people start to realize this is not the worst thing in the world. Ah, that it hurts Trump for a few days, and then people start to realize that it's not the worst thing in the world. So that we're clear. They are talking about the re-implementation of a total abortion ban from almost 200 years ago, a half century before Arizona was even a state, and well before women had the right to vote. The practical result of this law will be that rape and incest victims would carry their pregnancies to term, that non-viable fetuses would have to be carried to term, that doctors who perform abortions would face two to five years in prison for doing so. To call this draconian, dangerous, and outright insane would be an understatement. So while it's comforting to know that this random dude Mark Simone has decided that this will only be a big deal as far as he's concerned for a couple of days, for the actual citizens of Arizona, I'm pretty sure that their timeline regarding their dissatisfaction with this new law is going to last just a tad longer. And yet, somehow, this was the least offensive thing that this dude managed to say during this segment. Listen to what he says here. If you had to travel to another state to get an abortion, it's not the worst thing in the world. Hopefully this is a very rare occurrence in your life. Once in your life, maybe it would do it. Uh, buying a bus ticket to go somewhere to get it is not the worst thing in the world. Exactly. If you got raped and needed to figure out how to take time off of work to travel a thousand miles to get to the closest state where abortion's actually legal, would that really be so bad? Think of it as a vacation. The kind of vacation where you've been stripped of your bodily autonomy and have to figure out how to navigate the barriers erected by Christo-fascist lunatics who think that the US government is their church. Sounds fun, huh? Simone says, hopefully it's just once in your life. Kind of like a rite of passage, right? At some point, we should all be forced to flee our homes and towns and states to seek medical care hundreds or thousands of miles away because of a law that was written in the fucking 1800s that was just upheld in the year 2024. Might as well bring back the witch trials while we're at it. And who knows, even if you are accused of witchcraft and have to flee your home, hopefully it's just once in your life, right, Mark? You'll notice too that he suggested buying a bus ticket to go and get it. That's some coded language to cover up exactly who he's talking about here. Think about who needs to buy a bus ticket. Is it wealthy women who take the bus? No, it's who he views as lower class women. This is a guy, presumably well off, subjecting poor women to thousand mile bus rides to go get abortions in some faraway state. And while that may be horrific and daunting, that is clearly a price that Mark Simone is willing to have them pay for the privilege of living in a country that's adequately pious for him. Must be nice to have the sun and the earth revolve around you and your narrow set of beliefs, huh? And then of course, Larry Kudlow chimes in and says this. Remember, his point was the legislature, Mark. He didn't mention the court, so this is tricky. State Supreme Court, does that qualify as a state decision? That's Larry Kudlow trying to carry water for Trump by suggesting that because the state Supreme Court handed down the decision, that it doesn't really count as a state decision. In other words, it's not like the Republican legislators made this law, it was simply Republican judges who were endorsed by those legislators, belong to the same party as those legislators, run in elections alongside those legislators, and rule in accordance with the political platform of those legislators. See? Not at all like those legislators, and so clearly, this isn't a state decision at all. And I gotta say, it sure is interesting that Kudlow is trying to distance himself from this decision. After all, this is what Republicans wanted. They've been calling for Roe to be overturned for years, my entire lifetime. And so now that they finally got what they were desperate for, why not take the credit? Why not do a victory lap? Why not own it? In fact, far from owning it, they're actually running away from it. Take a look at this chart from Media Matters. When the Arizona decision banning abortion was handed down on Tuesday, it was covered for two hours on CNN, two hours and 20 minutes on MSNBC, and would you look at that, only 12 minutes on Fox. Which again, is so bizarre because here I was thinking that this was a huge win for the GOP. Here I was thinking that they would be proud of the fact they finally got what they wanted. And yet, it's almost like they're afraid of the consequences of their own actions. How about that? Here's what's most infuriating about all of this. Republicans have spent years beating their chest about freedom. This isn't freedom. This is the polar opposite. This is subjugation. This is exactly what the people who founded this country were escaping. The same people who beat their chest about proclaiming themselves patriots conveniently overlooked the fact that we have a separation between church and state in this country. 
And yet they don't care because it was never about freedom. It was never about the Constitution. It was never about patriotism. It was always about consolidating power for themselves. This is who they've always been. The difference is that they're not afraid to show it now. And bear in mind, that is exactly what they're doing. So for 52 years, people have wanted to end Roe v. Wade to get it back to the States. We did that. It was an incredible thing, an incredible achievement. We did that. And now the states have it, and the states are putting out what they wanted. When, when I was fighting this very hard, frankly, and everybody was for years, you know, it's been going on for 53 years. It's time to bring it to a close. But when I was fighting it, everybody fought it on the basis of states' rights, that it should go back to the states. And all legal scholars on both sides said, this is not a federal issue, this is a state issue. And I got it back. I did something important. But Senator Ernst, right. first on the Arizona Supreme Court, it upholds near total abortion. It allows, I think, for the health of the mother. But that's all. This was a law that was codified in 1913, and it was first enacted in 1864. A lot of people are running away from it. What do you make of it, ma'am? Well, hey, Larry, I am a mom, I am a brand new grandma, and I support life. And Senate Republicans, uh, the GOP, and President Trump really worked hard to overturn Roe v. Wade. So we returned that uh, back to the states. That is the law of the land with that Supreme Court decision. So uh, the states are handling that. The Arizona Supreme Court upholds a near total abortion ban. Do you have a thought on that? Well, look, this is, what's going to happen as a result of the overturn of Roe versus Wade, and as you know, I'm pro-life, is that we're going to decide this at the state level. State by state is going to figure this out. I'm sure Arizona will, Arizona will figure this out. Uh, in Florida, we've got a, a constitutional amendment um, that's going to help us figure out where we, where we are on. So this is exactly what ought to, be, ought to be happened. I'm incredibly thrilled that we are going to have a great law that's already on the books, so it will prohibit abortion in Arizona, and I think we're going to be paving the way and setting course for other states to follow. L l listen, I, I've been saying a long time it's a question for the voters, and, and, and it's going to be decided primarily at the state level. The good news is that at least we know it ahead of this upcoming election, because while Republicans might try to run away from it, they're not fooling anyone. And that's a point that Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs pointed out. So, uh, as you know, uh, Carrie Lake, who was running against you for governor, fully supported this ban, f fully supported this law coming into effect, uh, if it was going to. Uh, today, she now says she opposes it, and her bright idea today is that Governor Hobbs has to solve the problem. She said this is now your problem to solve. Mm -hmm. Well, look, this is just nothing but political opportunism on her part. And any other politician who supported this ban, politicians who celebrated the Dobbs decision, which paved the way for today's decision. Uh, and, and Arizonans are going to have the opportunity to hold these folks accountable in November. Um, as you heard from the senator's remarks, uh, every legislator in Arizona uh, is up for election in November. And every single Republican in our state's legislature voted for a fetal personhood bill that I was fortunately able to veto last year, but would have paved the way for an Alabama style ruling that bans IVF in Arizona. And uh, these folks are on the record supporting this ban and they can't walk away from that now. Biden too is making sure that Americans know the stakes in this upcoming election as far as this issue is concerned, which is why his campaign released ads like this one. This is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. Here's her little baby book. This is the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. All of these. Um, this is The blanket that she was in. And these are her little footprints. It's okay. No. <laughs> 
I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. So frankly, while seeing people like Larry Kudlow and Mark Simone nonchalantly writing off Americans' concerns may be infuriating, in a way it's helpful because it exposes exactly who these people are. So let them continue doing this every single day, and we should continue to show the rest of the country exactly who these people are. Because when it comes to time to vote in November, the only people who are going to be traveling on thousand-mile journeys are Republican lawmakers and senators and legislators getting sent back to their states and districts as private citizens. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.